Hello everyone, this is Keith here, and today I'm taking a look at Sunless Sea by Fellbetter Games. For those of you who don't know, Sunless Sea is a uh, sea exploration game with rogue-like elements. I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and jump into click new game here so we can instantly just hop right in and I can start talking about the game. Uh, there is a bit of a loading I noticed, especially when you start a new game, there is a bit of a long loading. Okay, so yeah, this is uh, Sunless Sea. Uh, at the beginning of the game, you start off at a place called Fallen London. Uh, if you're a fan of Lovecraft, you know, HP Lovecraft, you'll uh, definitely immediately start to notice that this game gets its inspiration from sort of uh, Lovecraftian horrors, and there's uh, a very uh, hard emphasis on terror and insanity and, and uh, you know, themes like that, which if you've ever read any of HP Lovecraft's works, you know, that's pretty much all he writes about. Uh, so yeah, anyway, when you first start the game off, you have to choose a past. Now, you can choose to either choose a past at start or cho choose one later when the game uh, presents the option to. I always just go ahead and click choose past and, and uh, go ahead and choose it from the start. Now, your past uh, defines what uh, starting uh, attributes uh, you get. Uh, like, for instance, the street urchin will give you a bonus to veils. A uh, poet will give you a bonus to pages, the skill of trickery and knowledge. I tend to choose Striochant because I do like the uh, evasion bonus. And depending on which uh, background you pick is also which officer you start off with. Uh, officers are uh, sort of crew crewmen who uh, give you bonuses, attribute bonuses. In this case, uh, Long Shanks Gunner, she uh, actually gives me one plus iron. And as the game progresses, as you make new discoveries, you fill up this pages thing here. And once, you know, you get this full, you get a secret. And then you can talk to an officer and then spend that secret to uh, increase attributes. As the game goes on, you get different types of uh, officers. You have a first officer, a chief engineer, a cook, and a surgeon. And you can also change your mascot, just kinds of stuff like that. And you can talk to all of them. So anyway, this is what the uh, game starts you off with. Yeah, uh... <laughs> The game refers to as the C area as the Z, so that's interesting, and it also refers to sailors as sailors. Echoes is your currency, so yeah, anyway, uh, and then you choose your ambition after you've chosen your backstory, uh, and your ambition is just sort of, I guess, the end game. So I'm going to go ahead and choose wealth because I want lots of money. And then you choose how the game refers to you, how uh, people will refer to you. Uh, I'm going to go captain. I like people to refer to me as Captain. And then you can choose a portrait. I'm just going to select a street urchin, so I'll select this one. Uh, I'm just going to name him Captain, because Captain, Captain. Why not? And then now this is the uh, main sort of interface of the game that you'll be, you'll familiarize yourself with. Uh, so the point of the game is you so you're this captain and you just sort of explore the sea and you dock at stations and you uh, survey the areas and just sort of talk to the inhabitants, sort of get a report of what's going on, and you come back here to Fall in London, your main station, and you sort of report the uh, happenings of the C to, or excuse me, the Z to the uh, administration office. And then for that, you get rewarded with fuel and supplies and just stuff like that. Uh, when you first uh, start the game, you get this uh, book for, called Advice for Captains. You get this with every new game, and this is just a sort of basic uh, tutorial the game is mostly text-driven. When I say mostly, I mean it is text-driven. Um, when you come to a doc, there's like no voice acting. Everything is text, uh, which is fine. Like I don't, I don't mind reading through uh, a lot of uh, texts and flavor texts and stuff like that. Uh, it is r well written, and that's sort of where you immediately notice the sort of Lovecraftian in inspiration is everything sort of written um, in a sort of Victorian age manner. So yeah, and the cool thing is, is once you're, if you don't need a tutorial, you, like you've already read all of it, you don't really need it, uh, you can go ahead and sell the book, which will actually give you a bonus. So anyway, yeah, we're just going to sort of click on this London tab here and just sort of explore uh, London. I'm going to actually initiate the beginning of the game, and I'm going to uh, ask if there's anything in particular. So the first here is it tells me to go to the Iron and Misery Company Funging Station, and that's sort of my main uh, area that it wants that the... Uh, survey office wishes me to uh, explore. 
So yeah, and I can also go to my lodgings, read the news, and uh, this is sort of an interesting mechanic is uh, doing certain events gives you these cards. For instance, I just read a morning paper and I was given a recent news card. Uh, cards are also sort of like currency. There are these items that you can spend uh, for a variety of effects. Like say if you're at a dock, you can spend a story to sort of uh, talk to a stranger and then that in turn can, he can give you some valuable information. Uh, so yeah, it is very interesting and these do stack. So as you get, uh, as you, I don't know, do more uh, discoveries and talk to people, you'll get things like uh, terror, terrors and just stuff like that. And they can uh, have all kinds of functions. So I'm gonna go back to London here. So I just started by talking to the uh, survey office. I just uh, started the, bait, the quest where they want me to go to the Iron and Misery, but I'm also gonna start off this quest here where I offer a passage to a tomb colonist. This tomb colonist wants me to take him north to the colony of Fenderbright. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, also uh, put your ship in the dry dock for repairs, hire more crew. This is uh, also how you, uh, this is sort of different tabs here, sort of, uh, I just switch between different things like this is the hold for instance where you can um, you know change your weapons change your engines and just stuff like that you also have your curiosities here which is the uh, cards I was talking about you do have a uh, limited fuel and uh, supplies supplies are used to repair your boat and also feed the crew uh, but once you, if you're a ship health goes below 50% you will have to put it in the dry dock in order to repair it though. Uh, journal is where you get your objectives and your memoirs like events that have happened. Uh, officers, this is where you change your officers as you uh, purchase new officers you can bring them, swap them in and out. Shop, every dock has a shop, uh, different people of course. This is where you can buy weapons, potions, uh, fuel, all kinds of, of stuff like of that nature. And then shipyard where you can buy new ships. So anyway, that's enough talking about the basic mechanics. It's time to actually start the game. So once you want to leave, you just press the E key, and then uh, WASD moves. Uh, w and S slow down. Speed up and slow down, respectively. Uh, switches your gears. If you see at the top left here, if I hit uh, S, it actually goes low as the gears come to a dead stop. Hitting up actually uh, increases the gears. You see I have a light. If I hit L, I can turn my light on and off. Using the light uh, burns through your fuel faster. However, uh, if, you go, if you go far away from a dock and you sort of go into the uh, abyss, or the darkness rather, you'll get these la lanterns that come up on your ship. And these are basically, it's, a, it's an indicator that you're in the dark. And when you're in the dark, your crew's terror begins to rise. So you can hit L to mitigate the uh, terror effect. Uh, so yeah, terror does play a big role. Once um, you know your terror increases a lot, you know really strange effects can happen. Uh, your crew could start to go a little insane, and yeah, it's, and it also affects your uh, chances to accomplish certain uh, obstacles and whatnot. So yeah, this is basically the game. Um, I'm actually at the Vendor Bright Dock right here. If I hit M, you get a map of all the area you discovered. If you hit Z, this little bat flies out. And uh, you can also click options down here if you don't want to remember the uh, shortcut. But essentially uh, what the bat does is Z bat. It, you throw him out and he finds any nearby uh, areas and he reports them down here. And if he finds an area, you can actually click on it. So that when, when you open up your chart, it puts a little icon and you can go there. I'm going to turn my lights off right now because I'm near a dock and it's just sort of a waste of fuel. See, anyway, you have this little lantern here that when something awaits you at port, that just tells you there's new events, these uh, port areas. I'm going to go ahead and dock here. This is the vendor bite that the tomb colonist wanted me to uh, bring him to. Now, I'm actually going to do some some nasty stuff and smuggle this guy. It turns out he's not really uh, who he claims to be and uh, yeah, I like actually doing this, <laughs> being a bad guy and letting this uh, criminal in the vendor right because it does give you a good bit of echoes to start off with. And of course we can explore uh, vendor right. You know, this is sort of your main objective is to go to these areas and explore and get different types of uh, reports, gather gossip. 
So now I now have a port report of Fender Bright, and I can take that back to Fallen London. And yeah, and then I'll get the uh, get some pay for that. Uh, it's better idea to get you know go to multiple ports and actually you know stack up on them uh, as much reports as possible so that way when you come back you get a ton of resources we also have shops here and this is an instance where I can actually sell uh, sort of event cards for uh, money but that's not really worth it to be honest I only get 10 echoes for recent news so anyway I'm gonna head out hopefully I can find some combat show oh, wrong keys I can show you guys some uh, combat. Uh, the way combat works is uh, you press E to go into combat mode, although if you get uh, within distance of an enemy it's what automatically does it for you. And then uh, you have this vision cone while in combat mode and essentially your weapons charge right here. Your weapons accuracy charges as an enemy is within your vision cone. And once it's full you can uh, do a precise shot. You can fire it before the little bar fills up, but you have a chance of missing. And the bar only fills up uh, when there's an enemy in your vision cone. Just go ahead and turn battle mode off, turn my lights on because it is a little dark. And the other functions you have is you can press uh, F to put full power to the engines. This is useful if you actually go into a whirlpool and you get getting sucked in. You can sort of put your engines in the overdrive. Uh, but that is dangerous as it does uh, have a chance of blowing up your engine. You can also pause the game with space. Uh, open up your calls it the, what is it, the, the Gazette here, <laughs> with G, and then you have the uh, chart here, which is just a map. So anyway, I'm just going to sort of explore a little bit. Oh, there's some enemy encounter right there. So, uh, if, I, if I keep my lights on, I can usually sneak up on them without them knowing, but if you have your lights on, they sort of notice you more. See, so yeah, anyway, this is the sort of combat of the game. You just sort of uh, try to avoid your enemies. You have a little indicator there when they attack, and you have their health and basic stuff like that. Okay, so let's see here. As you see here, when that while that enemy's in my vision cone, that little uh, square box fills up, and uh, I can shoot before it fills up uh, as soon as the weapon is loaded. But that does have a decreased accuracy, like right there. I just missed completely, and it's very annoying. This is the basic crab enemy, so you know it's not too difficult. There are uh, more difficult enemies, but you know it just started, so I don't want to take on anything difficult yet. Uh, and of course I can choose to butcher it for supplies which will feed my crew or dissect it for knowledge. Now because I a uh, street urchin I didn't really start off with very good knowledge so I'll just go ahead and butcher it for supply for uh, supplies and that'll save me some food. That I don't have to, that'll save me some supplies rather. Hmm. So yeah that's, this is the, uh, this is basically the game here. You just sort of go from area to area and uh, if you're a fan of sort of text-driven games, oh, that's actually an enemy right there. A swarm of bats. Definitely a pretty unique enemy. Oh, God. Uh, oh, five damage. Yeah, those swarm of bats are actually pretty powerful. And uh, more difficult enemies, when they hit you, they actually have a chance of, you know, knocking your crew members off and destroying parts of your uh, ship and knocking cargo off and just stuff like that. Uh, okay, so I'm not actually going to eat these bats. You will gain terror eating bats, uh, but, you know, they get you supplies. It's still early on, so I don't really have to worry about my uh, terror meter that much. You can, of course, decrease your terror. Uh, certain events can decrease your terror, or, like if you go to a pub and drink or something like that. Of course, that'll calm you down. So I'm actually going to go to Hunter's Keep here. This is one of the first areas you sort of run into uh, in your playthrough. And because I'm a street urchin and I have a veil bonus, I can actually uh, spy on this area and it, you know, it's pretty straightforward as it says. Go ahead and do that and this is how you get some, uh, some information on it. And you sort of have these like weird, uh, handsome, it's just some eeriness going on. Yeah, and I forgot to mention fragments is what the uh, pages is. If you get enough fragments, you get a, a, a secret. We uh, uh, where we go here and then talk to them. I'm gonna do lunch with Lucy. And yeah, and see, this is what I mean by the game is mainly text driven. Is everything is conveyed to you that way? Uh, so if you're not into text games, this might be a little bit uh, difficult for you to get into. But if you are sort of in, interested in reading 
and a fan of like Lovecrafting horror, then you'll definitely enjoy this game. It definitely has that sort of strange, eerie feeling that just, you know, something spooky's gonna happen. Go ahead and turn off my uh, lights because I am right here by uh, the dock. And yeah, and there is pretty, uh, there is actually a pretty big map to explore. As you can see when I zoomed out there, there's a whole area to explore. And of course, you know, you do these areas enough to the point where you'll have tons of fuel uh, and, with, you know, do reconnaissance around here. And then you'll just sort of explore deeper and deeper and run into, you know, giant uh, sea monsters and stuff like that. Uh, definitely a very enjoyable game. Uh, the reason why I said this game has uh, roguelike elements is when you die, you have a chance of sort of passing on items and... The game is sort of meant to be played uh, on the difficulty setting. By default, the game presents you uh, in difficult mode, which is where, uh, you know, you get one save and, you know, you can't save at any time. Um, and once you die, you're dead. You know, the game's very sort of harsh and unrewarding. Uh, or it does reward you, but it's very harsh, you know. Uh, very uh, You have to sort of risk to get any type of reward. Whereas in easier mode, you can s make multiple save stacks and, you know, the game doesn't really punish you uh, quite as harshly. The developer uh, does recommend playing the game in uh, the harsh difficulty, and I do as well because I think that makes it more enjoyable. So anyway, I'm going to come back to Fallen London here and go to the... Uh, survey office and actually give them see I can actually these are the cards I got for doing the port reports and I can just sort of give them to him and it gives me fuel uh, it gives me a little bit of echoes let's do this and of course once you do that enough you'll sort of attract the attention of the higher authority and then he'll give you sort of more uh, you know difficult objectives and stuff like that ask you to do personal errands for him which of course nets you a higher uh, rewards. I'm actually going to buy this light here and what, what what is auxiliary for? I think this is what this is for. Mm. So yeah, I'm going to, I just bought a uh, new light. I'm going to put that on the bridge there. Let's sail out. Oh yeah, definitely a lot brighter. A lot bigger cone and everything. It's actually pretty nice. So anyway, that's uh, Sunless Sea. It's definitely, uh, in my opinion, a very enjoyable game. It's very simple and straightforward, uh, but it works because of that. The developer knows, you know, the developer is pretty sure the developer is aware that it's just sort of a, a simple mechanic, and he just, you know, it's just the game's designed really well, and you know, it's you just explore the sea, and it's just a straightforward game, and it's just really enjoyable because it doesn't try to do too much. It's you know, it knows what it is, and it's very fun because of it. Uh, so yeah, I definitely recommend this game if you're a fan of uh, ro uh, roguelikes and you sort of like sea exploration games uh, and you do like sort of Lovecrafty and horror, then uh, I think you'll enjoy this game very much. Anyway, this has been Ghost Squad 57, uh, or Keith, uh, signing out.